Have you ever made burgers with store-bought ground beef? With some pressing and squishing, you can get that meat into a patty, but when you cook it and then go to take a bite, it's tough, not tender. Why is that? And how do we prevent it? We need to harness the power of myosin. Burgers, sausage, and meatballs are all made with ground meat, but their textures are pretty different. And you might think the reason for that difference is their ingredients. And you're not wrong, but the mixing method, it really matters too. Why is that? Meat fibers are composed of a number of proteins, one of which is called myosin. You can think of myosin as a little tube with some spikes sticking out the sides, and those little spikes help it to grab onto stuff, kind of like Velcro. When you cut or grind meat, myosin is more easily freed from the muscle fibers. In the kitchen, this is called myosin development. Now, once myosin is freed, it acts like a glue and it can grab onto water, fat and oil, even other proteins, and it'll hold onto them even when heated. No matter what you're making, you need the proper amount of myosin development. First, let's get back to burgers. The first recipe I ever made at ATK was Brian Roof's pub style burgers. And I've got that set up right here. This is two pounds of beef sirloin that I have cut into half inch pieces. I went ahead and froze this meat after spreading it out. It froze for 35 minutes and the meat is firm, but not frozen. I'm gonna grind this not in three, not in five, but four batches. I will use about 35 pulses, probably one second pulses if I know Brian to do this. What I'm looking for is meat that is about, maybe exactly one sixteenth of an inch large. Did I lose? Where are we? Don't tell Brian. <laughs> I'm not gonna dig out a ruler, but this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna keep processing the rest of this beef. So I have my meat divided into four portions ready to shape, but this seems like a lot to go through to make burgers, right? Why is Brian making us go through all of this? Turns out he knows a thing or two about burgers. So when you're making burgers from store-bought ground meat, that meat has been really processed, maybe ground twice, way more than what I've done here. And what that means is there's a lot of myosin available to grab onto the rest of the meat. When you go to cook that burger, it really tightens up and it eats tough. In fact, if you notice, a lot of recipes have you dimple a burger patty before you cook it. That's to account for the buckling that the myosin causes. What I really love about Brian's method is the beef is treated so delicately that very little myosin is released that keeps the burgers nice and tender. They're just really good, worth the work. I'm just kind of gently pressing everything together. You'll notice I'm not dimpling these. Again, that's because there's so little myosin development that I'm not worried about them buckling when I cook. Great, now I'm gonna season these burgers, mostly with salt, a little bit of pepper on the surface too, cause why not? I like to use kosher salt for this. Um, I think you can kind of feel the crystals a little bit better and have a better idea of how much is falling from your fingers. Time to cook. I'm gonna cook these burgers over high heat in a skillet, two minutes per side, just to get some nice color. And then I'll finish them in a 300 degree oven, taking them to 125 degrees for medium rare. And then we're done. All right, burger's done, time to eat. Brian, I'm sorry I made fun of you. This burger's delicious. It's got so much flavor. It's so tender. It almost falls apart in a really, really good way. All because we were very careful to make sure we weren't developing very much myosin, just the bare minimum to hold that meat together. Minimal handling is just one strategy for preventing myosin from toughening food. If you look at recipes for meatloaf, you'll see that they contain a panade or cheese or sometimes both. Those ingredients are kind of just keeping myosin from grabbing onto all the meat. Then the food doesn't cook up tight. Myosin Myosin development isn't always bad though. In fact, it's really important for a lot of foods. My colleague Steve Dunn has a recipe for a sweet Italian bulk sausage. It's not cased into those familiar links, but it's the same stuff. It starts with some pork butt that's been cleaned up. And to this, I'm going to add some salt. I'm also gonna add some seasonings. There's some whole fennel seed in here, little sugar, some spices. You can get the full recipe at cooksillustrated.com. 
I'm just going to use my hands for this, but I want to mix this so that that mixture is really well seasoned. The salt, it's actually going to help extract myosin from the meat, and that is step one to making a good sausage. Now that this is well mixed, I'm going to cover it and pop it in the fridge. It's going to sit in the fridge for anywhere between eight hours to two days. After that rest in the fridge, I'm going to take this pork, spread it out onto a rim baking sheet. That sheet's going to go into the freezer for 35 to 55 minutes. And what I'm looking for is for these chunks to be firm but not frozen, kind of like the beef for the burgers. I want to make sure that fat is nice and cold so that it doesn't melt as I'm grinding. I have my partially frozen pork here. It is very firm, but not so firm that I can't squish it if I try. I'm using a meat grinder for this, but you could use a food processor if you want. The goal here is to process this a lot more than what we were doing with the burgers. As this meat is getting processed, I'm really cutting all of those muscle fibers pretty aggressively. That's going to help with my myosin development. There's a lot of friction, and so that's why everything is cold. I have frozen the grinder parts. I have my bowl of ice to keep the meat cold after it lands in the bowl. That's to keep the fat from melting out. Now it's time to mix the pork. And when I say mix, I really mean mix. All of that salting and grinding, it's developed a good amount of myosin, but not quite enough. This mixing action where I'm just kind of folding and smearing this mixture across the sides in the bottom of the bowl, it's pulling more myosin from those fibers. And we really need that because sausage gets its snappy, springy texture from the myosin. This looks pretty good. It's nice and tacky. It's sticking to itself in the bowl. That's because of the myosin. That's sausage. I'm just going to shape a couple of these into patties and cook them off. This recipe makes about two pounds of bulk sausage, and you can do any number of things with it, whether it's cooking some off and eating it right away, sausage, egg and cheese sandwiches, putting it in a red sauce, a meatloaf, whatever you want, but enough talk. Let's give this a try. It's sweet, it's fennelly, and it's got that characteristic snap that you expect in a good sausage. You find that in dumplings, whether we're talking hargau, shumai, they all have that lovely snap because of moderate myosin development. What happens when we crank that dial up and go for maximal myosin development? I'm going to make lion's head meatballs, and this recipe was developed by Annie Petito. Now, these meatballs, they're from the Jiangnan region in eastern China, and they call for ground pork. Most store-bought ground meat, whether we're talking about this pork or ground beef, turkey, chicken, it's probably been ground twice. That first grinding kind of breaks everything up. The second one mixes the meat so that they have a really uniform grind and can portion it evenly. All of that processing, it really develops myosin. This is a little bit tacky already but it's not quite enough. We're going to add a little bit of salt to this to help draw out more of that myosin. I also have a little bit of baking soda that's going to keep these meatballs moist as they cook and a little bit of water. That water is just to help disperse the solids. The pork goes into this bowl. I'll give this a quick toss just to help disperse the salt and baking soda. Next, the flavorings and a little bit of binder. I've got one egg some soy sauce, Shaoxing wine, grated ginger, minced scallion whites, sugar, and white pepper. To further develop myosin, I'm going to skip using my hands. I can't do as good of a job mixing this and kneading that mixture as the stand mixer can. So here we go. So what I'm looking for here is for this mixture to lighten in color slightly, become tacky and stiff, usually takes 45 to 60 seconds. All right, this looks great. Time to shape. You can see kind of how tacky it is and how it sticks to itself. It looks kind of like a pate almost. In order to work with this, I'm actually going to lightly moisten my palms with just a little bit of water. That myosin in the meatballs, it's going to stick to the water instead of my hands. You can see how tacky this looks, and that's because all that grinding and mixing, it pulled out as much myosin as possible, and that's really important for the texture of these meatballs. I'll finish shaping the rest of these, um, get some broth going, and we'll cook them off. I've got four cups of chicken broth here in this Dutch oven, and it's just come up to a boil. I'm gonna shut this off, and I'll get my meatballs in here. 
this pork was super finely ground. That means the fat in that pork, as we cook, it could be prone to melting away and that leaving our meatballs kind of dry and sad. That's not going to happen because of the myosin. It's tacky, gluey nature allows it to hold on to all of that fat as well as the liquid we added. Even though I'm going to simmer these for an hour and then take them out and cook them for another half hour, they're gonna stay moist and tender and juicy. So here they are, my lion's head meatballs, and they look great. One of the things I love about this meatball is it's really tender. In fact, it's so tender you can cut it with chopsticks. The reason I could do this, even though we really tried to develop as much myosin as possible, myosin has another role. It's an emulsifier. It holds on to all that water we added in the form of the rice wine, the soy sauce, the egg even. It also holds on to all that finely ground fat and that water and fat, they keep the meatball tender, even through all that myosin development, even through all that cooking. And the results, This is just melt in your mouth tender. They're so good. When you're working with ground meat, whether it's beef, poultry, pork, or even seafood, myosin development is critical. So the next time you're at a cookout or enjoying lion's head meatballs, remember your friend myosin. What's your favorite recipe where myosin development is really important? Let me know in the comments below, like this video and subscribe. And for more cool recipes and techniques, check out cooksillustrated.com.